Okay. You ready? Okay. All right. Uh, hey, everybody. I'm Steve Scott. It's Derek Darling. What we want to do with this uh, little video here is to cover some basic breakdowns. Uh, they're not turnovers. Remember, turnovers are that sweet thing we eat for breakfast. That's a turnover. Some people, however, do call them turnovers, and that's okay. Uh, I like the phrase breakdown because it applies a very aggressive uh, movement taking an opponent from a stable to an unstable position. That is the definition of a breakdown. Uh, we're going to concentrate today on the breakdowns when, when Buki, the, the, the person having it done to him, is either on elbows and knees or flat, okay, as opposed to guard sweeps or, or, or turns like that. So this is what we're going to emphasize today. i got my little page here. We're going to kind of go by my notes. I'm going to hit quite a few of them here, so let's, let's start. The most basic breakdown that we teach, that I think anybody should teach, is the forearm near leg breakdown. So often when your opponent is on elbows and knees, now remember also I might say, go up in the part here. He doesn't want to do this, okay? He's giving me a lot of holes here. That's great for collegiate high school wrestling, uh, international style wrestling. We're grapplers. We're judo players, jiu-jitsu fighters. Uh, Sambo wrestlers, we're not really wrestlers, we're, we're more grapplers. So he wants to start on his elbows because he has more movement. So he can you know, sit out, do what you want to do, yeah. or we can get out. If he's just hanging on hands here, all they do is support his weight. He wants to be on his elbows so he can really fight me, whatever like that. So there we go. That's just an aside for the bottom grappler. Okay, for our mirror leg breakdown, bam, he's down, I get to his side. Hand closest to the head. Scoop under here, get the elbow, suck it in tight. This other hand is closest to the rear end, the legs, grab the near leg. Okay, and I just roll him over his shoulder. Come right to the side control position. Munigatami, Yoko, Shiho, whatever. Okay, so down here like this, hop to the side, far arm, near leg, grab it. Don't get fancy. My right hand goes right around his thigh, hugs it tightly, and roll him. Far arm, near leg, roll him right over. There we have it into the controlling pinning situation, no Komi situation. A variation of that is when it's both elbows, okay? So from here, when I do both elbows, it's not so much a straight shot, it's more of an angle this way here, and I'm gonna use my shoulder, you'll see what I mean. So I reach through here, here, and here. Again, elbow low, near the, or the hand low near the mat, and his elbow here. Don't grab up here, grab low, because I want to chop that elbow in. Now, this shoulder, I want to help lift him a little bit. I'm just, you know, I can collapse and pull in like this, and I just help roll him right over, right on top. It's a very momentum type throw or a breakdown. So I can come from the side here, quickly, shoot, come over, Start working for my Osekomi. So it's a very ballistic type movement. Another variation of the farm near leg is the both legs, both knees break down. You can grab his position here. I trap here. I can, if I can, I can reach here and break him down and work it. Or I can catch here, and I can still catch a near leg or an ankle, whatever it may be. Okay. In this case, I'm going to grab his ankle, so I can suck it nice and tight, break him down. You work up the line of his body. It's not as, you don't get him on his back so much, but you do collapse him on the side and break him down. So here, far arm, or far knee, collapse him, grab here, start working up, work up the line of his body. Okay? That's, those are all variations of the forearm near leg. Another basic one is the Belt Nelson. We call it Belt Nelson for years. I actually stole the phrase from my good friend Bob Corwin. Uh, it is when he's on elbows and knees. All right. Wait, reverse. What I'm going to do? With I'm going to go with this hand. I'm going to grab his belt, but I don't want to be straight on with him. If I'm, my left hand is on his belt. I'm going to be over here to my right, over his left shoulder. So I'm over here slightly. See the angle of body. At this point, I underhook. Fingers to the sky, grab your own wrist. Don't grab the belt, it's not tight enough. Grab here. Suck it in nice and tight. Or under his shoulder, see my, my, my chest is under his shoulder. I never let go of this. I drive him right over. Right over, say, call me. So again, go like this. Work to the side slightly, not straight, because if I do straight, you come up here, get out of the way. 
So I want to be sure I get under that shoulder, okay? So here like this, to the side, underhook quickly, grab your own wrist. Come under it, see how low I am? I drive them right over, I'm not going to throw anything in the osacolium. I'm going to have to shift, whatever, but we got them broken down. This is also quite good if he's flat. Let's work on this side so you can see. If he's flat like this, I'm going to have to pull his elbow out. And what I want to do is basically develop Nelson from here, but I'm going to have to pull it out a bit. Now look how I do here. He's got it tight. Two on one, cup and cup, grab the gi. See the elbow here? Pull it out, wrench it out like that. Now at that point, crank it up a bit, slide your arm under. Okay? Now I can grab my hand here, get to the side, drive them over. Again, this is the basic application. There are other ways of doing it, but this is a really good one too. We'll show you another variation in a second here. But notice, another hook here, cup, cup, but grab the knee, elbow here, crank it open just enough. This hand slide under, under hook. You notice I'm not grabbing the belt initially, I'm underhooking first. Now I grab the belt. Now I grab my wrist. Now I work under that shoulder very low. See how low I am. You can do the only toes I mean. Now, a variation of that is where I come and just pull it out. If I can't get his arm in, I can't get my arm through his arm, just cup it under like this. Hook it like this and catch it. That's a nice grip. So that's a good variation. If I can't get my arm through there, my hand through there, pop it out, underhook there, like this. See, it's tight. These are all ending up into osaikomi situations, but you can also end up in submissions as well. But these are great breakdowns. If we were doing freestyle judo, these would all be getting one point. Nice. Me, doing breaking them down from a stable to an unstable position. Just a couple more. I don't want to take up too much time, but we're going to do a few more here. Uh, classic one is what I call the judo stack. He's on, flat on his belly, hiding here. Again, I always taught this to the kids in this position. If he's hiding here, he's not aggressive, he's playing chicken. Uh, he's going to pay for it. And we always call it chicken judo for the kids. I taught it to him that don't do this. This is a bad position. He's doing nothing here other than just trying to kill time and stay out of trouble. If you're the bottom guy, don't rely on the referee to get you out of trouble. Use your own skill and fighting ability to get yourself out of trouble. Don't wait for Monte to get out of trouble or, or you know, call an action. All right, so here's a good example why. He's laying here hiding, okay? I'm to the top. I stand quickly. One hand. Grab between the shoulder and the elbow. Grab the gi at the triceps, right there. Now I'm squatting next to him. The other hand, I grab just above the knee. Don't grab below the knee and make a pocket. See how I grab that? The pants, right there and there. Elbows down. I'm squatting. I'm going to explode backwards. Don't fall back. You don't want to be on your knees. You want to be exploding and dragging back. Go down. Now, if he gives me some fight, I want to angle, when I want to explode him back, I want to move toward his near shoulder. So here he is here, here he is here, squat. Now watch, I'm going to move toward, I'm going to pull more on the leg to pull him more over the near shoulder. Catch him. If he's fighting a lot, I may have to pull him back fairly hard here and here, and I may have to really kind of run him a bit. Kitchen. Very effective. Really old, but it works. If I like this move, when he's on elbows and knees, we can do the same type of move. Okay, what I'm going to do here, though, I'm going to probably grab something about at the shoulder. I need a kind of a high grip here. I can't reach all the way over very well. He may get out of trouble. I don't have, yeah, boom. So I'm just going to get a good handle here, okay? Now, the other hand, I'm not going to reach over, I'm going to reach around his butt. So, reach around the butt and grab just about the knee, just above the knee at the pants. Here and here, see this? Nice and tight. Now I'm going to roll him to the near show, like this. Catch him down. Derek's used this a number of times in judo competitions. 
against guys like this, yeah. and it really does get them on their back. Freestyle judo, he just picked up the point, very vulnerable, the bottom into a set pony. So here like this, see this? Control here, reach around, grab, don't grab low. You can, it may work, the, the ankle is fine, but if you want to get a good grip, see that? Just around the buttocks, do not grab over, it's not as powerful. Grab there, the pants just about there. Now, come up the top, pull down here, roll there, bam. That's the judo stack. A couple more, and we're done. Uh, you do what I call the Burns Breakdown. Pick this up years ago from Anne Maria DeMars, who was in Anne Maria Burns. Usually we call it Burns Breakdown. Uh, opponents flat like this. All right, what I'm going to do, several variations. I'm going to reach both hands under and grab the jacket, the lapel. Got a nice grip on the lapel. Nice and tight. But notice my starting position. I'm over here. See my right knee across his buttocks? I'm over here on the left side. I'm going to jump over and drag him over. So say you may have to move to... <laughs> okay, so we're like this. But notice the position. See how low I am? I'm going to jump over and pop him over. And I'm going to stay on my knees. Do not fall on your butt. Okay? So when I jump over, jump over and drag him. See how I drag him over? Now see I've got double lapel here, my chin right here, settle in, no side corner. Okay, so stay there Sandy, aim your head towards her. There you go, okay. Maybe we've got a better view here. Like this, tie him up. See the, see the ride position I've got, okay? I'm gonna hop over and, and drag him over basically. Hop over, drag, Chin, right in the collar belt, finish out. Now, a couple of variations. Damn. I was going to try something like that too. I could uh, double wrist it. Well, like this is great for a no key situation. At the same time, so uh, I'm not double wrist, and double wrist. Tight in. I'm just grabbing his wrist. Wrist riding him here. Same thing. I hop over, drag over. See how I grab the wrist here? From a double wrist ride. One more. <clears throat> We're going to go wrist and lapel. Okay? So, probably the way this is done most effectively, if I'm going to go this side, this is the side I'm going to do at the wrist ride. The right hand. So, get the wrist ride here, chop it in, lapel grip here. See that? So, got wrist ride, lapel grip, like this. When I hop over, I can drag him over. I have more to drag with you. Finish out. So wrist, lapel. Those are some basics. I have no kids anymore. I'm getting out of steam. <laughs> Did you want it? Did you want it? But these are some basic breakdowns we do here at Welcome At. And uh, I recommend trying these. They've all been, we've been using them for years with great effectiveness. And I would say use them in any grappling sport you do. We've been using a gi, a jacket, but you know you can make these no gi as well. We have some more stuff from time to time on YouTube, but we did want to cover this. Thanks a lot.